Asatoma Sat Gamaya Tamasoma Jotir Gamaya Mrityorma Mritan Gamaya Namaste. Hello everyone. We are back to our Nakshatra series and today we are going to start to talk about um, how we are going to travel in this journey. Okay? First, we are going to have one video about the following points. The technical points about the nakshatras, the cosmic relations and the divine embodiments of them. The first uh, aspect, there is going to be the number of the nakshatra, the name on its uh, regular uh, way of writing, E-I-A-S-T form, the stars that we are going to have in this nakshatra and the Panchamahabhuta. Since now I'm using this PowerPoint show, probably the stars, there is going to be the names and also one separate slide on the shape and how it's related to the uh, Rashis on which the nakshatra are. If it's only one Rashi, it's going to be only one picture, but if it's just like Kritika nakshatra that is in transition from Mesha Rashi to um, Virishaba Rashi uh, from Aries to Taurus there is going to be this relation it's going to be interesting to know the points of the stars okay so um, the second slide is going to, we are going to have more time on this we are going to talk about the cosmic relations the cosmic relations are going to start with the cosmic guna well there are three mm, nines three groups of nine of the nakshatra. The first one there is Rajas, the second one there is Tamas, the third one there is Sattva. The first nine of them are promoting the energy that it was just like sleeping to wake up, to bring conscious to a material ground. The second, um, third, is going to have more impact to have its materialization and going deep into material existence. And the third um, part is going to transcend material existence on subtle ground. So this is how we are going to understand uh, Rajas, Sa Rajas, Tamas and Sattva in this three pariyai, these three uh, different moments of expansion and transcendence of conscience. In the first, the second and the third parts, there is going to be another division on three parts. And inside it, there is going to be also this order, Rajas, Tamas and Sattva. But the points that they were making in the general uh, scheme of consciousness, they are also going to be like a fractal organization inside of it. So the first third of the first third is going to be Rajas Rajas. The second third in the first third is going to be Rajas Tamas. And the third third in the first third is going to be Rajas Sattva. Okay? And this is also going to be on a third level also. <clears throat> so we are going to have nine nakshatras in three, 27 nakshatras in three groups of nine. We are going to have inside this group the same uh, manner of disposition on Rajas, Tamas and Sattva. And then again in the division of uh, three we are going to have this difference. So we are going to have Rajas, Rajas, Rajas. Ashwini. And then we are going to have Rajas, uh, Rajas Tamas, Barani. And then we are going to have Rajas, Rajas, Sattva, Kritika. The point here is to understand how they are going to express the development of consciousness in a more broader sense. Okay? Uh, in Kamila Sutton book, there is another perspective of how to use these three levels of um, gunas. But here I'm going to 
um, understand them in this way. The desire of the nakshatra relates to the devata that we are going to speak on the following slide. Uh, the desire is the uh, purpose of manifestation. As the same way that divine consciousness did, uh, had the desire to become many from one and this created the universe or this uh, version of the universe, in the same way the desire of the nakshatra makes the purpose of its existence. The basis above the celestial um, grounding makes how it uh, permeates in a more subtle, more sukshma manner the energy of this nakshatra. The basis above is the more uh, stula, gross manifestation of this um, um, ground it's a good uh, word to understand this concept of basis and from this superior ground to the uh, below ground inferior ground we are going to have a tension and this tension creates a potency creates shakti so we have the desire that manifests two um, poles and between the tension of these two poles there is it's created a, uh, a movement, it creates a potency, it creates a power that is the Shakti of the Nakshatra. Then we are going to the divine embodiments of the Nakshatras and we are going to speak about the Gotra, the lineage, which of the Saptarishis uh, this Nakshatra relates and from this we are going to have mainly the book of Prashtrivedi, <coughs> the book of Nakshatras. This information is very interesting to have because it helps us to understand how people gather together in tribes, in groups, and have affinity. Just like when you do a consultation with a Ayurvedic therapist or with a diotisha, um, some people, even though they are very good, you don't feel like you understand the person or that person doesn't understand you. This is mainly because they are not uh, working the same gotra. So we have seven sapta rishis uh, that connect the divine conscious to these planes of existence. And these seven cosmic rays help us to be more aligned to certain kind of frequencies. The direction of the nakshatra is also uh, important to know where to worship the Devata, because uh, the divine forces are there to be. Uh, first, we, sh we should have conscious about them, and then we should uh, relate to them in the form of worship. According to Vedic culture, in, when you worship an energy, it brings you the potency to work with it. You are not worshiping it because you need the energy for it, just like always, this is a very rajasic way to uh, behave with the nakshatra. But sometimes you can work just like because you love it and you uh, want to show your love and gratitude and your um, ananda state of mind, your blissful state of mind. So direction is important about this. The symbol is just like the key how we can unlock the uh, Devata. The symbol is always relating to how to make, uh, how to access the Devata. Because usually uh, when you get to a house, if you have a locker and uh, you need to open it, you need a key. And the symbol of the Nakshatra many times is the key to understand how to access, how to talk, how to relate to the Devata. That is the powerhouse of the Nakshatra. That is the way that we can um, um, <clears throat> envelop, the way that we can develop this potency, one of the 33 potencies that are described on the Rig Veda. Here we have just like one slide <laughs> to uh, understand 
the um, groups of them, okay? So all of them could <laughs> manage to be in just one slide. Uh, we have Brihaspati, Prajapati and the Puritris uh, in one line. They are the cosmic intelligence that is um, sustaining all the creation. This would be the Brahman force, the Paratma force, uh, the supreme uh, force. The Prajapati, that is Brahma, that is the creational force, the very Rajas energy. Uh, it's also related to Daksha, Prajapati, uh, and also the Pitris, the energy that are um, related to um, worshipping the ancestors. These three are going to relate respectively to Pusha Nakshatra, um, Rohini Nakshatra and Maga Nakshatra. After this, we have the Adityas. Uh, Adityas. There are the energy, the celestial energies that make uh, the life on energy, life on Earth possible in a more uh, subtle level. We could say also mental level, but mainly are the energy that are not very dense, they are not very gross, they are more sukshma, they are more subtle. And these um, devatas, they relate to uh, several nakshatras. Here we don't have all the adityas, we are only exposing which the ones that are relating to nakshatras. That's why you have this 12 in number, uh, just like saying, they should be 12 barren, but they are not working here, uh, all the 12 of them. So Aditi, that is the mother of them, it relates to Punarvasu Nakshatra. Uh, Aryaman relates to Purva Palguni Nakshatra. Baga relates to Purva Palguni Nakshatra. Mitra relates to Anuradha Nakshatra. Pusam relates to Revati Nakshatra. Um, Jesta relates to Indra Nakshatra. Hasta relates to Savitri, uh, no, Savitri relates to Hasta Nakshatra, to Astara, to Astara, it, it's difficult to <laughs> pronounce this word, relates to Chitra Nakshatra, uh, Vishnu relates to Shravana Nakshatra, Varana relates to Shatabisha Nakshatra, and Vishwavat, it's the name of the sun, uh, and relates to Ashwini Nakshatra from its son, uh, uh, the Ashwini Kumaras, and it relates to Barani Nakshatra from another son, Yama. So these, let us say, 12 Adityas, we are going to be using some of them to talk about these Nakshatras. All this information comes from the book that I showed in the previous video, the Divine Forces of Lunar Nakshatras, and the, the author is Rade, and this is the page 16, 17, and then we are going to Rudra and the Rudras. Rudra is going to transform in Shiva, in Hinduism, uh, and here he is still uh, in its own uh, ancient personality, in relating to uh, Ardra Nakshatra, Ajaikapad is going to be the devata of Purva Barrapada, Ahir Budnya is going to be the devata of Tara Barrapada, Riti is going to be the devata of uh, Mula Nakshatra, and Sarpa is going to be uh, the one relating to Ashlesha. So, we are going to have these um, energies that are more responsible to uh, maintaining in Earth the possibility to worship divine consciousness, even though there are some uh, materialistic forces, asura forces that try to destroy this kind of procedure. And also the Rudras, the 11 Rudras relate to 11 places, so 11 energies that are, exist in our life, and when they still exist, we feel glad. When they don't exist, 
we cry with sorrow. That's why they are called rudras also, including your life force. And the eight vasus, uh, they are uh, relating to the nakshatras of the nista, from the eight of vasus collectively, to kritika. Anala here represents the agni, the fire element. Um, apaha represents the water element and relates to purva ashada nakshatra. Uh, Swati nakshatra relates to anila. Uh, that is the cosmic wind, and uh, it's also prana in more subtle level. Soma it relates to Murugashira nakshatra. And uh, it's also the delight that we can uh, have in this world. And also Indra Agni uh, is relating to Vishaka Nakshatra. These vasus are mainly the Buddhas, the elements that we have in on earth, so we can exist in a more material um, form, okay? In a more uh, stula, more gross manner. If you want to have more information about this, we are going to talk specifically about each nakshatra and each devata in the following videos. But I strongly recommend, if you don't have any familiarity with these things, please go and check out in this book The Divine Forces of Lunar Nakshatras by Radhe, as I have shown in the previous videos. Okay, so thanks for watching. In the next two videos, we are going to present another um, parts of each nakshatra that we are going to speak as we um, showed in the previous video. Okay, see you in the next video. Namaste.